They claim it will revolutionize the way we live. If it is what we think it is, this technology could change the world substantially. It runs on tap water and doesn't pollute. The whole home would be powered by something that uh, you just have a one-time fee for and it would almost run endlessly. They claim it works, but others say not so fast. The general phenomena is one which is very difficult to accept. I would bet very much that it's probably worthless. Tonight, the Patterson power cell. Fact or fiction? There was a time not so long ago when progress was considered almost a law of nature. Science fiction writers pictured a glorious future filled with sparkling cities, clear skies, and endless possibilities. Underneath the dream, of course, was a belief. One day, we would find the perfect energy source, simple, clean, more than we could ever use. Nowadays, we are a lot more skeptical. We've been disappointed too many times, too many false claims, too many scientific dead ends. But the research has never stopped. And so, with a proper nod to all the doubts, we introduce you tonight to yet another controversial new project. And this is a strange one. It's a simple device that seems to multiply energy on demand, and nobody can figure out how it happens. Now, it could be a breakthrough, or it could be another dead end. But it certainly has credible people asking, what if those old science fiction writers had it right all along? What if this time it really is true? ABC's science editor Michael Gillen looks inside a scientific puzzle. We've been able to reliably demonstrate a device that produces a thousand times more energy out than we put into it. Uh, it'll be a total revolutionary concept of energy because we're essentially using water as a fuel. What could it do as far as an electric power plant or a water heater in your home? There, there's so many applications in your mind can one run wild. I would say the uh, potential value is almost um, unlimited. It's hard to believe, but this is what all the commotion is about. It doesn't look like much. In fact, it looks rather crude. You have some wires here, some circulating salt water, and then you have this. This is the heart of the new energy device. It's called a Patterson cell, and if you look at it closely, you'll see that it's full of tiny little beads. But these are no ordinary beads, and the man who invented them is no ordinary person. I started making beads back in 1953. 74-year-old James Patterson looks about as homespun as his device, working out of a large garage in Sarasota, Florida, with more than 100 patents to his credit. Patterson had always planned on being a chemistry professor, but in 1951, while working for his PhD at Berkeley, Dow Chemical made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Dow hired me before I graduated, got my degree, and uh, they paid me more than what uh, I was going to do, get after I got my degree, so. It was during his years at Dow that Patterson invented a recipe for making tiny beads. Beads so perfectly round, few people in the world can duplicate them. If I have a, a claim to fame, I, I'm a good, a, a good cook for little beads. Well, this is... Uh, uh, my storage area, and it's almost like a library of what I've done. <laughs> Over the years, Patterson's beads have been used in many different ways, in water purifiers, cosmetics, even as the talcum powder inside surgical gloves. I'm better than a millionaire. Just because of the money you got from... from little beads. <laughs> I have converted alchemy, uh, uh, little beads, into, into gold. <laughs> The problem is the device itself sounds like alchemy. 